value, you're not just intellectualizing, is that when you start to really give yourself permission to allow this darkness to arise, oh, it's emotional. You know, it's, it's, it's intensely emotional. You can see at that point why intellectualization was used as a defense to not feel, because it's, it's so intense. And then, the more that you go into it, it's very much like in, in Buddhism where they, they talk about, they talk about a lot about emptiness in Buddhism. Empty the contents of consciousness, empty your mind. And actually when you follow the Course, if you keep practicing that workbook lesson and you keep working with it, you will start to feel more like, almost like literally, like your mind is being emptied. Like, it's like the Holy Spirit's got some kind of a vacuum cleaner just <laughs> sucking these concepts out of there. Things that you used to get all ticked off about and believe and get all worried and concerned about. It's like you go, huh, no charge with that. It used to really bother me that to hear that word or to hear, to see those sights or those sounds, you know, you start to feel a real softening and an emptiness. And and ultimately, you know, Buddha talked about going into the void. He was really talking about just emptying the mind of everything that you think you think, you think you know. That takes a lot of trust too. I mean, the only reason why we fill our mind with all these things is we, we, we believed it was helpful. I mean, I, for example, let's just take one discipline, education. The reason why we go through this endless amounts of education is because we actually think we're, we're getting more intelligent, more skilled, better prepared, and we're becoming more fulfilled through increased education. And of course, I went through kindergarten and then first grade through sixth grade school, then I went through junior high, high school. Couldn't stop there. I had to go for ten years of university on top <laughs> of high school. Talk about an addiction. It's, it's absurd. I always tell people, well, I did it for you. Now, let me tell you. <laughs> go the other way. Go, go to the empty route. Because, because, because what happens is, you, you may feel more intelligent, but you don't necessarily feel more peaceful. Because the ego has latched onto that intelligence, and it's identified with that intelligence. And it likes being knowing more, knowing more than the next person. You know, it's really caught up into that. And what I found is the way that you can tell when you're really stepping back is is this sense of of stillness and peace and defenselessness. Uh, Jesus says in the course, whenever you feel the need to become defensive about anything you have identified yourself with an illusion. So anytime I would feel just a little bit defensive, I would, I would start to drop in, trace it in a little bit, and go, oh, I'm still identified with it. And it could be with anything. It could be with The Course in Miracles. You could be out and you're at a, a, a cafe and you've got your horse book open, some friends are there and somebody comes along and s s looks at it and starts knocking the Course of Miracles. What is that stupid book? What's this crazy? This is crazy. It says the world's an illusion. This is crazy. It's, you feel a little defensiveness arising. Jesus is saying you've just identified yourself with an illusion. Even with the Course book. I remember one time I was going to Course group for years and I went to this one group at a, at a New Age shop. At the end of the group, the, I was standing there talking and my worn out little Course book so I came up and said, can I see your course book? I said, sure. So I gave it to her. She turned, she walked right out of the door and just disappeared for the... <laughs> and, uh, you know, it was just, didn't even hesitate. She just took the book and, and she took, she walked right out of the door. And then I just continued talking to whoever I was talking to and she was out for maybe five, ten minutes, probably walking around the parking lot or whatever. Then she came back and she walked in, she came, she put it back into my hands and she said, just testing. <laughs> it's just that we, we start to realize that all, nothing happens by accident. The Spirit just wants us to, to be the living 
theory, the living experience of that, and to not be identified with any concepts, to raise them all up, to empty our mind of all of them. And in that sense, as you do that, it's, the world seems a little more and more surreal, and it's more and more like you're watching something. Just like when you're watching a television show or a movie, there's like an awareness that it's really just a TV show or just a movie. It starts to be more and more predominantly that feeling, that same kind of watching feeling. You do feel mentally very passive. Whereas if you get really back with the spirit, the body can still seem to be done through. But you're no longer identified with the doer. And that's where the strain comes in is identifying with the doer, thinking you are that which is doing something, good or bad. You know, it's still, a, there's a heaviness. So, you, get, you feel more done through, and you feel more like you're watching, and there's a sense of peace there with it. I mean, I've, I've had experiences, I would train my mind over many years, and then I, I there was somebody on an internet interaction I had with them, and they said, oh, come up to Sandusky, Ohio, and, and I want you to meet my friends and my children, and we'll go to an amusement park. And I remember going up there, and and we went on all these roller coaster rides, this kind that I would never have gone on as a child. And it was like nothing. My stomach wasn't flipping around. It was like, huh. Then we went into this thing where it was kind of like one of those Omnimax kind of, you know, those big, huge screens and surround, you know, it goes all around you, 360 degrees and everything. And I walked in there, and they had all these bars, like rows and rows of bars. No seats or anything, you're just supposed to, I wonder what the bars are for. Well, they started showing this thing, you film of going off a cliff and being on the back end, of a fire engine in San Francisco, it's just going around bends and everything, and people started falling over and grabbing hold of the bars like they were just hanging to the, the floor wasn't moving, <laughs> nothing was moving, and probably if they filmed it, it would have looked really funny. There's a bunch of people <laughs> hanging on the bars, running into each other, grabbing hold of the shore, and I was standing there, and I was like, ah, this must be the mind training, because I wasn't interpreting what, what was the body's eyes were seeing. I was standing there very still. I wasn't even holding onto the bar. People were bumping into me, knocking into me and everything. And I was just standing there. And then at the end of the show, you know, a lot of people were all on the floor. And I was like, they brought the lights on. And, like, <laughs> and, and I just walked right out. And the people couldn't even walk. They were so dizzy. They couldn't even get off the floor. They were just grabbing around. But, but you see, that's what the Course is teaching us. Number Lesson number two, I have given everything I see, all the meaning it has for me. Clearly, it's just a movie. But the mind was interpreting motion, and it was interpreting all kinds of things. It wasn't just a bunch of shadows on the on the wall or surrounding, it was interpreted as actual situations and lots and lots of motion. Talk about getting motion sickness. These people were on the floor. And and I noticed it transfers like when I've been in planes and on boats and one time I was I was on a ferry up in the Pacific Northwest of the United States and I was I was up at the front of the ship, you know, like uh, Leonardo and Kate. <laughs> I was right up at the very front. And I, I was up there with a friend of mine, Beverly, and we were we were right up at the front, standing there looking out, watching the water. And we didn't realize it, but behind us was one of those gigantic foghorns, you know. <laughs> and they just let go with this <laughs> kind of sound there. And literally she jumped like two feet off the ground. And I just noticed that I didn't even move. And I was like, huh, it must be the mind training. Because loud sounds 
unexpected loud sounds, what the world would call startling loud sounds, don't make us jump. That everything that we feel and everything we react to is all coming from inside our consciousness. And as we find that still point inside our consciousness, and we rest in that, then that's how you can tell the world, it's like you're watching the world. Not in an intellectual way, but these little kind of occurrences show you, like that's what I thought about, hmm, that's interesting. In the past I would have <laughs> hopped to, but it just wasn't there. So, so it's those experiences that show us that. They just keep showing us and showing us, we're getting a little more detached.